just going to shuffle that away and get a new draw. Was here in just a moment searching up the forest. Maybe not. I'm not clear which route Jessup wants to take on this turn. The mulligans he's had to take this game, he's working with some limited resources. And, and again, the, the individual removal spells have very little value to Danny right now. Because unless he can kill both coursers, there's no point in killing one of them. Basic for forest has been found by Nissa. And, and again, the, the individual removal spells have very little value to Danny right now. Because unless he can kill both coursers, there's no point in killing one of them. Basic for forest has been found by Nissa. We'll see what's next here for Chessa. He'll play a temple for now. Take a look at the top card. Let's be able to stay on top pretty quickly. Nissa, however, currently outclassed by what's on the battlefield from Sylvan Crew. Let's see if Sylvan wants to actually draw the Bioblade. Let's see if he does pretty quickly. Looks like the answer is no. Nissa, however, currently outclassed. He'll lose one, then gain two. Thanks to Corsairs being on the battlefield. This is all taking place in the upkeep before he does draw a card. So he's. Simply shuffling away Bio Blight because he doesn't want to draw that at this point. Looks like maybe something a little more higher impact. Interesting that, he would, that Phil is still able to fit in Bio Blight into a deck like this where you're playing so many more forests because of Nissa. Just don't want to. Yeah. Simply shuffling away Bio Blight. Just languish on top of the deck now. Here's Thoughtseize. Just what Jess wants to show his hand. Elspeth. Ops on Charm. Heroes Downfall and a Forest. Elspeth, yeah, it's gone. No surprise there. Siege ran on time now for Silverman. He'll go with the Morph. You have to imagine instead of Protector. I think that he wants to play a Morph this turn to have the opportunity to get back a removal spell and kill Nissa before Danny can play land number seven. Because a 4 4 is actually pretty powerful against Phil's board right now. And Phil also doesn't want to pull the trigger on Languish that he's drawing next turn because he loses all of his creatures as well. Looks like he's trying to lose a draw here for Jessa. And Danny's hand is removal anyway. So it's not like there's a lot of value to get the Siege Rhino out ahead of schedule because it's just going to die. Sure. So make sure you take care of Nissa. The threats you have in play already necessitate a removal spell, and then the coast will be clear for your Siege Rhino down the line. And Danny's hand is removal anyway. So it's not like there's a lot of value to get the Siege Rhino out ahead of schedule because it's just going to die. Sure. Make sure you take care of Nissa. The threats you have in play already necessitate a removal spell, and then the coast will be clear for your siege rhino down the line. So what's next here for Jessa? He's got the ability to play two spells in one turn with Heroes Downfall and Ops on Charm, or he can just play a siege rhino. He's just going to pass. Net Protector's going to unmegamorph. He'll get a counter, of course, become a 3 2. Return Hero's Downfall. Language will be the draw. We'll see the top card of the deck is now Temple of Silence. Time to attack. No great blocks here. Yeah, he can chump block, essentially. Can't block the net protector. If he tries to make a move with Ob's on Charm here to, <laughs> to, to block, then complete disaster. Yeah, he can chump block, essentially. Can't block the net protector. Maybe Slow and steady for Phil. I mean, he's really done a good job of 
kind of maximizing the edge he's gotten out of a mulligan to five versus his seven cards. Hasn't tried to play too fast in the game. Slowly but surely grinding Danny down. Yep. Yes, sure is not falling down protector. Really good job of kind of maximizing the edge he's gotten out of a mulligan to five versus his Yeah, now Danny's in the, the tough position of am I supposed to jump block or not? How am I supposed to value my Nissa here? Valuing it pretty highly. And look how good that sequencing was for Phil from the previous turn with the Den Protector. That Den Protector got a hero's downfall the same way that a Siege Rhino would have. Yep. But he also got to be more efficient with his mana and get it back a removal spell for his trouble as well. Forcer will trigger twice with the Templar. Top card of the deck right now is a third Forcer. The Seal Silver must lay that on top or bottom. Matt Healing would go downstairs, take a look at the top card. Now Vile Blight gets back. The one of. And now here's Hero's Downfall. Take care of Nyssa. No Berberg on the battlefield, so Phil will have to take the one to Cassidy. He's down to 22. 22 to 5 in favor of Silverman here. Pretty good lead. Remember, Silverman does have a copy of Languish in hand, and currently not playing a role in things. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the first card sideboarded out by Bolt. Yeah, it seems not great in this matchup. They all have the same creatures, and it doesn't even guarantee that he catches you up when you're losing, because often you're losing to Elspeth or Siege Rhino. Here's Obson Charm. And Jessup going to go down to three. He's looking two cards deeper. Tap and take a draw step. Heroes down, full space now. Jess, I've always been comfortable playing Obzon. Made a lot of deep runs in the open series with it. Including his finals loss in season four to Dylan Donigan. It's going to go with Siege Rhino, it appears. He's got to go up to six. Silverman got to go down to 19. He's had some Citadel pass that turn back. Siege Rhino got to try to stabilize things, but he also knows your opponent is drawing a vile blight. Siege Rhino on top of the deck. There's Gwen. Sure, the two forcers. Silverman up to 21. It's a good place to attack. And there's a block. Vile blight will shrink the Rhino enough that Forcer will kill it. Two damage will come across. That's going to go down to four. Put him down to one. Facing a Siege Rhino on top of the deck. I can't imagine that Danny has a way out of this situation. I think Phil was trying to hold back the Rhino for a little bit there, uh, out of respect for a possible sweeper out of Danny's deck. But now with another Rhino on top, just make it beat the board at the top of your deck. Probably impossible to do both. And it is. Phil Silver going to win game number one here over Danny Jessup. The outside control mirror goes to the player on the left to begin things. As we get ready to take a look at the sideboards, their main decks are pretty similar. I wouldn't be surprised if their sideboards are too. We'll start with Jessup's, which you have in front of you. Two copies of Duress, two copies of Drown and Sorrow, two copies of Rush and Cleric, a Murderous Cut, and a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, a Read the Bones, a Dramocus Command, a Glare of Heresy, an Ultimate Price, an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, a Tassiker the Golden Fang, and a Silence of Believers. For this matchup, what I'm interested in is more removal and a more powerful top end. Especially cards like Silence of the Believers, which can often catch multiple threats, are excellent here. Read the Bones and the Planeswalkers like Ugin and Ajani. Additional spot removal is fine. You, you may see something like Glare of Heresy come in as an answer to Elspeth. You may sell, see something like Murderous Cut come in because one Delve spell will be pretty efficient. But uh, the, the Planeswalkers especially and Silence of the Believers seem like the superstar cards for the matchup. Two Drown and Sorrow, three Heresy and Clares, two Read the Bones, two Duress, a Dramoka's Command, an Ultimate Price, a Murderous Cut, a Tragic Arrogance, a brand new one from Ash Fortunes, along with an Ugin the Spirit Dragon and a Garrick Apex Predator. Phil can go pretty big there. Yeah, same story here. You know, the, the Planeswalkers, the two copies of Read the Bones, and then additional removal as he sees appropriate. Some good options all the yeah, way around. Yeah, solid options, and, and that's pretty common for this kind of deck. You see a lot of one ofs in these sideboards, and often it's because the, the cards kind of do double duty. Uh, some are good for some matchups and not others, uh, but, you know, you see one of this removal spell, one of that removal spell, one of another removal spell. There's a lot of matchups where you can bring all of them in, and some matchups where one can be good and not the other. These players will shuffle up here for game number two, a place that you can play on control a couple weeks from now if you are a Siege Rhino fan is at Star City Games for Regionals. It's taking place on Pro Tour Weekend. You see the playmat that is available here. We'll bring up our locations first so you guys can see exactly where it's going to be. Plenty of awesome locations available. Exactly. You can head over to StarCityGames.com slash regionals for more information right now. 
This is occurring during Pro Tour weekend, so if you're not qualified for the Pro Tour and in the United States, you can check out the regional championships closest to you. If you're interested in qualifying for the Invitational, running Open Series points, or just playing in a large cash standard tournament, regionals is the tournament for you. And of course, the playmat that is available, free, exclusive to our first 200 players, play on Ellen DeGeneres' fantastic Oscars photo. StarCityGames.com slash regionals, August 1st, plant your flag, head to that website for more information. I'll probably be bad, like, I don't know if you will be. No, I don't think so. The problem is, now that I moved to Los Angeles, the regional is a little bit further away for me to get to, and I got some testing to do for some events that I'm actually participating in. Ah, yes, like every city. Which actually is standard, so that is an incentive to go down there and okay. play a little bit. Yeah. Got my Atarkas commands over at the dealer booth this morning. Smart. So I'm ready to go. Ready to burn someone down? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no surprise there. You are who you are. I saw you battling last night on Magic Online. Yep. Those Rift Bulls got to go. They are horrendous. They're really bad. They are horrendous. I like a lot of... Also, I don't understand why you're only playing three Curtis, but I only have three on the account, and I refuse to buy one. Same reason there's no Scalding Tarn in the deck. I see we're taking the testing for the tournament real serious. That's good. That's why, there's not, there's not, that's why there's not a 13th fetch line in the deck either. I only have three is a great answer. I thought I had four because I know that I played a, a Curt Ape standard deck, you know, during Ra original Ravnica. Sure. And there was definitely four Curt Apes in that deck, so I don't know what happened, but there's only three on my account. Three is the the only reason I'm playing this many is because I have this many. It's the best possible. Well, possible. I had, I was I was going to my account, and I'm like, I want to play four Curt Apes in this deck. And then I had three, and then I was, then I was like, eh, one Lava Mancer is in a bunch of modern decks. Like, one Lava Mancer is probably fine here, you know? Plug in one. Lava Mancer's not been great so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not probably that. should just be a fourth Curt Ape, but to circle back, I don't have a fourth Curt Ape. Yep, and that's, that's really the problem. And I think on Magic Online, they're like seven cents or something like that. Like, just a cost I'm not willing to pay. You are a delight. You really are. I must say. It's just not a cost I'll pay. Can't do it. Yep. Cannot do it. Danny doesn't want to keep his hand. He's going to mulligan to five again. Not the best time to do so. Not, not, not to say that there ever really is a great time, but now's not great. You can see a little bit of frustration for him. I think this matchup where you can take one mulligan comfortably and be okay. There's so many. I, I actually don't think a mulligan to five is, is the end of the world in this matchup. It's not good. But there's so many cards like Obzom Charm and Nissa to recoup the cards and get the ball rolling. And then eventually the game becomes about cards like Elspeth and Ugin. They become about the haymakers, you know? So you don't like mulligan to five. But at the end of the game, it, it wasn't. If you hopped into that game at the end of it, would you have looked at Danny's board in the hand and said, clearly this guy's mulligan to five? There's some matchups where you can really tell, but I don't think the Obzon Mirror match is one of them. I read the bones here, and Obzon Tron there, and Corsair reveals a land over here, and all of a sudden, I have enough resources to work with. This is just going to take a look at five cards now. It's coming down out here in Chicago. Yes. It is really raining. You hear that noise in the background? They say raining cats and dogs. Is that the is that the, they say when it rains hard? Yeah. Yes. I can tell you don't approve of that. It's just you know. <laughs> Down to four goes Jessup. Pretty common expression. I'm surprised you you needed clarification there. Well, it's not one that I ever use. Yeah. So I just want, and it's not one that you know many of my friends ever really say. Right. It's it's a phrase used by elementary school teachers when addressing children and the elderly. It's not a term that. A the average person uses in their day-to-day -day life. So there you go. That's why I right. wanted to make sure. Because if I get but it wrong, once you were in elementary school, and you probably had a teacher say that to you. But if I get it wrong, you're going to be you're going to just jump all over me. Sure. So I'd rather play it safe instead of just being. That's fair. That's fair. Since I know what you're going to do. If I get it wrong, once you were in elementary school, Jessica, I'm looking for cards. That's a co confident keep. Confident playing of Caves of Coilers. Sure. This is a devil of now from Phil Silver. Top card, gonna stay on top. Jessup will draw. He found land number two. It's a temple. It is unclear where it's gonna go. This is a devil of now from Phil Silver. Top card, gonna stay on top. It'll go on the bottom. To Silver, it'll go. He found land number two. It's a temple. It is swept here. Back to Jessup. Has Obzon Charm in hand. Don't know what he's so upset about. 
I'm doing one of the three mulligans. Yeah. Basically a perfect hand. Yeah. I think he's got a siege rhino too. I think he, he may have two. Yeah. Pretty easy game. So I'm going to search for basic planes with that. Wind swept yeah. He's down to 19. He'll draw off his turn. Basically a perfect hand. Pick up a temple, silence. I think he's got a siege rhino too. I think he, he may have two. Yeah. Pretty easy game. Coarser time perhaps. That'll be Nissa. Search for a basic forest. See the use of the checklist card there. The bill. There's his basic forest. I believe Mirage. That is yes, Mirage. Yes. Along with his planes, still got it. I really like the checklist cards for the planeswalkers because there aren't that many of them, and they're color coded, so it's very easy to tell from a distance. Very clean, as opposed to the Innistrad ones where yes. there was just a lot of them and not really designated. Hops on charm here for Jessa. He'll pay two up and draw two cards. He can undo some of these mulligans he's taking. There aren't that many of them, and they're color coded, so it's very easy to tell from a distance. Very clean, as opposed to the Innistrad ones where there was just a little draw again. Temple Silence looks like he has two of those. Watching this deck in action, it, you know, it's the Nissa Corsair combo is really nice because you don't like playing Corsair on the third turn in a lot of matchups because it'll just die and you don't get a chance to land. So being able to play Nissa on three as so you do something with your three mana and then gives yourself an opportunity to play Corsair on four, get a look at the land, and just play one out of your hand even if you miss. It, it's it's a subtle thing, but that sequencing is very nice for the deck. Saw Jessup resolve read the bones. A bunch of scrying taking place this turn. Here comes Nissa. Jessup's gonna fall to 12. Silverman gonna play for us. And a Siege Rhino gonna bring Jessup down to 9. Silverman up to 22. Jessup will untap. He's had some time to draw some cards. Now he's under some pressure. Does have a copy of Elspeth in hand. He's got enough cards to function now. Again. If you look over at, at Danny's hand and, and board, it doesn't look like someone who mulligan to four. That, that's the nature of this matchup. It's slow, and there's just a lot of two for ones hanging out. Down to eight now. Search for the planes. If you look over at, at Danny's hand and, and board, it doesn't look like someone who mulligan to four. That, that's the nature of this matchup. It's slow, and there's just a lot of two for ones hanging out. Down to eight now. Perhaps a rhino here. Scott's going to take care of the Siege Rhino. Love the fact that he's playing one Murderous Cut in this deck. And Danny's always played one Murderous yeah. Cut. Not having one Murderous Cut in the 75 is nonsense. Yeah. There's a Hero's Downfall. In comes Nissa. This is about to be land number five. We'll just see which one it's going to be for Silverman. He's got a few options. So no Temple of Silence. Top card to the bottom. It's especially pronounced for a deck that often struggles to play two spells in one turn, even when it gets to four or five mana. Being able to, to kill a creature for one mana is already so powerful, and this deck especially needs plays like that to be able to transition to the late game where it has a huge edge. It's especially pronounced for a deck that Jessup does have another Siege Rhino in hand. He'll go that route, up to 12, Silver down to 15. To kill a creature for one mana is already so powerful, and this deck especially needs plays like that. I'll spend the draw here from Phil. It's a big one. Planes here is Elspeth. It's going to minus. And now all of a sudden, Danny's got to worry about Phil from two different angles. One, there's an Elspeth out there. But two, there's an Nissa that can flip next turn. Yeah, he's sort of getting beat on both fronts the beat down front and the control front. And the whole game, Phil's answered Danny's play, hit him for some damage, and then forced a response out of Danny. And you can only take so many turns like that. Silverman's been in the driver's seat all match long. Answer Danny's play. Hit him for only a few more attacks away from winning this one. And you can only take so many turns like that. Silverman's been in the driver's seat all match long. Can't play your way to see late top eights before, and he's a commanding lead at this point. So Jessup is trying to play catch up. Looks like he's going to play his own Elspeth. Some soldier tokens are coming. Back to Phil Silverman. He'll take a draw step here. Temple of Malady. He'll start by playing a land that's going to play Nissa. It's into its new form. And why would you see this all that often? It's going to go up. I feel that.
that top card puts a land on the battlefield. And Elspeth's going to go up as well, so three soldiers on the way. Seamless integration. You can't. It's ruined if you mention it. Just let it be, okay? Just let it be for Randy. Let it breathe a little bit. Let it breathe. Seamless integration. I don't have wrestling reference for Nissa because it's new. So I gotta work with that. Okay. Just let it be, okay? Just let it be for Randy. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Here's three mana. Untap, he gets to take a draw, it's a forest, and he gets to activate three planeswalkers this turn. He'll start by playing a temple, however. Top card to the bottom. Nissa, that's going up. Reveal that top card. Or come on in. Elspeth, take up three soldiers. What do we got for Garrick? It's going down the line. Yep. It's a good way to make sure you don't forget. But you said it. Can turn it all around. Well, it gets back to neutral at least, but but Phil, but that I, can turn it around. Yeah, I like Phil going ahead and drawing a card every turn with Nissa. It's at least some insurance policy in case Ugin occurs that he's seen some extra cards. So Danny wants to return. He's got two rhinos and Elspeth and Murders in the graveyard. Yeah, you know, I, I I imagine that if he has the option, he'd like to return a, a land. Yeah, because I don't think he has land number eight. He's got a murderous cut here to take care of the token. This at least allows Den Protector to take care of Elspeth if Phil has nothing. Yeah, which is pretty nice. He has Rogue's Command, however. Stretching out the game and really trying to magnify the mulligans as much as he possibly can. In, in a short game, the mulligans don't necessarily matter all that much as long as you have lands and spells to function. It's only when, you know, turn eight rolls around where you really start to feel, I've got two cards in my hand, my opponent has five. And that's how the game feels right now. And I think Phil did a very good job of, of pacing the game slowly, was very conservative, and made sure to kind of magnify the, the feeling of Danny's mulligans. What I think is going to be really unique about Obzon moving forward, uh, we've talked so much about our language this week, and then we're going to continue to talk about it, of course, because it's a card that is just so in-your-face good, and it's going to affect the way people build decks. You know, we watched that matchup where both players had three languages main deck. It's nonsense, that matchup. I feel like it's pretty bad. So if Obzon becomes the best deck, maybe, the consensus, are people even going to play language in their deck? In their main right. deck or sideboard, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Obzon's the best deck. I'm not going to play Languish, neither are they. Okay, I'll play my hyper aggressive deck now because Languish is not being played because Obzon is the best deck. That's going to be the kind of cycle I think we see players go through as well. And we see the same evolution with Bio Blight and with Drown and Sorrow yep. and sideboards and removal spells that are very good against a class of threats or decks and not good elsewhere. I, I don't think Languish is ever leaving the 75 of Obzon, but I do expect the main deck sideboard numbers to be in constant flux. We got Joe set for you guys. He's playing blue black control. Uh, he brewed this up a little bit. He's got some different cards in here. So we're going to head down to our future match right now and take a look at what Joe's up to. He's up to a great start this weekend. We're already seeing a main deck copy of Infinite Obliteration, for example, a, a card I did not expect to see in the main deck this weekend. He also has four main deck copies of Dark Petition. 
Okay, so uh, he's certainly up to something here. Don't want to confuse that with demonic. In fact, our condition is the demonic tutor that yep. has spell mastery. So perhaps we will see that come into play here in this in this matchup. He's playing against Obs on aggro right now. Uh, there are some main deck options. Herald Torment, Boon 